Hey. How are you? Um, y'all, I need you to give me permission to view your room. I need you to switch to a different room. I need her else in the room beside me. Thank you. Whoa. What are you? Where are you gonna shoot? Go to the back corner. I can still have that on for the employees. You're gonna need to No, I thought you meant. If you have a blue check by your name, your link is not working. If you have a question mark, it means I pick a seat. I have nothing. Oh my What? So. What Everybody get the hell. Yeah. Oh, shoot. I think I think I'm just gonna like get up here and it's no, it's like it's a computer. It's a, I don't, I don't, I don't know if my That's mom is, but okay. it's live. Yeah. Is my mom on? There's no viewers. Um. Not yet, no oh, okay. oh my god, wait, you see yourself? No, that's good. If we get a timer, right? We'll see it in front of us. Okay, hold on. Oh, 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 Does anybody have a, a well, you all have laptops that you could put up for um, like a timer so people can see it? I don't, it doesn't work. You're a lion. <laughs> Uh, to the basement. Yeah. Yeah. 
Just 
I don't know, a couple people go at a time, but we're not going to go while people are giving their speeches. This is what I would recommend. I recommend you grab your hot chocolate or whatever you want. I grab, grab your candy cane or your marshmallow and put them in your cup. And take the plastic off the candy cane. Then get your cup of hot water and grab a packet and just make your drink at your seat. It'll just go faster if we do. Okay. Um, we I have the camera set up here so I can see right now. There's one person watching our video. Good morning. Um, you guys will be able to see if you're like in the way of your slideshow. Um, also, I have the clicker right here. So when you're ready to start and you're ready to change it to the picture, you're going to click this image right here. Okay, see, watch. Look at how magical it is. <gasps> Crazy. This is how it's going to go. Carter is going to deliver his amazing poem. Then Carter is going to go over there and he's going to click out of his and he's going to click the very next person. So it's all set up and you're going to hit present. So it's the slideshow. Everybody's going to do that every single time. And then Carter will make his way back. Questions? Let me say it one more time. If you have a blue check mark by your name, Yoel, you do. You need to change your sharing properties so that I can see it, so that you'll have a presentation behind you. Everybody hear that? Do you want me to double check that they're good? Breathe a little more. How about some people get a hot chocolate while I check this out? I'm 
Everybody's going to put their poem somewhere on here. I need everybody to be silent. Carter, whenever you're ready, I'm ready. Do I do I like an intro? Just like nope. You can just you can just click onto your images and get going. Unless you want to do an intro. Okay, whenever you're ready. Rock out like you just got a pick six. Rock out like you just got a clutch tackle on the fourth down. Rock out like you got your favorite candy bar on Halloween. Rock out like rock out like you finished your homework for the weekend. Rock out like it's your birthday and you got a ton of money from your grandparents. <laughs> rock out like you shuffle your playlist and your favorite song comes on. Rock out like you go on vacation in Hawaii and you spend all day just relaxing on the beach. Rock out like you just got a new phone. Rock, rock out like you just got an A on a math test for the first time in the year. Rock, rock out like it's Christmas morning. Rock out like you just got what you, rock out like you didn't get one of those annoying 15 second ads for a YouTube video you've been dying to watch. Rock out like it's your off hour that you have with a bunch of your friends. Rock out like you just got a new sweatshirt that's so comfortable you have to force yourself to take it off. Rock out like rock rock out like you just got through airport security without any problems. Rock out like you like your mom just called you down for dinner and she made it your favorite meal. Rock out like you rock out like Black Friday and you go to your favorite store and the shelves are completely full. Rock rock out like you just got home from a rough day at school and you get to take a long nap. Rock out like you said new squat PR. Rock out like you're taking a nice bike ride on summer morning and it's just the right temperature. Rock out like you hang out with a bunch of old friends that you haven't seen in a long time. Rock out like you're running down the sideline with one man to beat, and as, he, and as he sticks his arms out for the tackle, you push your hand right to his face mask, and as he falls down, you watch him eat turf. <laughs> rock out 
like you wake up one morning and all the world's problems are all the world's problems are solved. Rock out like you wake up one morning, like your like your parents look at you, like you've never like they've never been more proud, like you've never worked harder, like you've never felt more complete. Rock out like you look back at everything you've done, everything you've worked for, and say and say to yourself, I've made it. Thank you. didn't even need the timer master yeah I, I kind of forgot about that that's okay it's okay that would stress me out so go right there yep perfect okay love and compassion how sweet the words as exquisite as the whistling of two songbirds. Left often undistinguished, but they are not the same. And you cannot call one by the other's name. Oh, how can I make it just a little more clear? See that tree, love is the deep supportive root, and compassion bears its luscious fruit. So first, you need love. It is the judgment in your heart for that you must dispose. Every interaction with another has purpose, has meaning. Look down at their glass you'll see it is teeming. Find an appreciation for their divine uniqueness. Having such tenderness for others is in fact not a weakness. This understanding clears the head, and suddenly there is no weight to what others have said. For love can give hearts such a surge of electricity, you can inspire smiles and bring joy with such a lovely simplicity. After love, one's compassion flows. Their understanding for others lives and grows. One's empathy guides the path of choice and leads us to determine our role in helping the masses rejoice. There for all, to one person we must not bind, one becomes a hand reaching out in the dark to aid the blind. The defeated lean upon the shoulder of compassion, an ever-present arm there to stabilize the unsteady till their feet may gain traction. Love and compassion, how sweet the words as exquisite as the whistling of two songbirds. Left often undistinguished, but they are not the same. And you cannot call one by the other's name. Thank you. Just go to slideshow. Perfect. Good job. Everyone's a book that is still being written by those around them. My family has helped me write my story. Some people are open books who wear their hearts on their sleeves. Some people are closed books who keep things buried inside. Some people's books are bright and colorful, while others can be dusty and old. Some books have never been opened by the author or by a reader, but all of us have a story to share. Most books are neatly held together, but some are cracked and glued back together. Sometimes, though, the older the book, the better the story. Every person you encounter leaves a line in your book. Some people write one line, others write a whole chapter. But regardless of how much you write on someone else's story, always remember that you are leaving a lasting mark. My story only has a couple of chapters, but they are filled with laughter and smiles. My first chapter, only my family wrote it. The next are filled with elementary adventures. Then my family and middle school friends competed for space to write. My friends now dominate my current high school chapter. Some lines are not always ones that we want to remember. Some cut deep and leave a lasting mark. These lines are the ones that make us doubt our story. These lines write over the fainter ones. And these lines are the ones that make us try to rewrite our story. But life is not always a happily ever after. I've written lines for people throughout the years. Some lines I'll remember forever, but some I'll never remember. There can be different parts to anyone's story. Some parts are our greatest celebrations, 
the others were written when we are at our absolute zero. But the story always goes on, no matter what. I don't know much, but I do know that life is not always the perfect storyline. Life gets crazy, but that's okay. Life's not always going to be a happily ever after, but it will have moments that feel just like a fairy tale. Emma, will you do me a favor? Will you close all those open ones on the top? Thank you. You will probably want to step I love looking at the stars. Not because I love outer space or I'm fascinated with planets and black holes, but because I'm fascinated with the idea that there's something greater than me out there. Each star with possible solar systems, with possible planets, our human minds can't even begin to comprehend just how big and long and wide the universe is. In reality, I'm just a speck of dust leaning through space. They say that the probability of each person existing is 1 in 10 to the 2,685,000th power. That's quite a chance, and I'm not going to waste mine. I'm always striving to be the best version of me. I want to be someone who can, one, thrive and not just survive. Life's too short for me to just get through it. Two, lend a hand to those who need help up. Not because it's always easy, but because it's always right. Three, live life like it's the first day of my life. People say to live like it's my last, but I'd rather live life knowing that each day is a fresh start rather than a last chance. Who I want to be is not always easy. I often find myself running through life, moving at the speed of light, pushing harder, faster, trying to achieve the next thing. I find myself reaching for perfection, but I become blind to the perfect moments right in front of me. I worry about things that will never happen. I spend time deciding what I'll do for situations that will never occur. I get caught up in my to-do list when really, at the end of it all, it wasn't about what I got done, but about the impact that I made. Hi, my name is Isabella. I'm a 14-year-old girl who loves butterflies, flowers, and most of all, my family. I don't know where life will lead me, but I do know who will lead me. In time, the stars will align, and it will all be okay. I can relax, I can trust, and I can let go. Thank you. I remember when we were walking around the DU campus. It was so beautiful to see the sun setting behind the buildings. I wish we could stay for longer. I remember feeling like I was on top of the world in Manhattan silence looking out over the city. It was so beautiful, just the two of us there, the gorgeous fall colors and the squirrels running across the leaf-covered grass, the new crisp feeling in the air. When we were walking back out of nowhere, you reached up and punched a sign. I couldn't help but laugh at how you didn't think it was going to hurt. I couldn't get the smile to leave my face. I remember when. I remember when we were in second grade and we became friends only because I wanted you to teach me a trick on the monkey bars. We evolved this game where we were fairies in a magical world trying to defeat the evil fairy we called Samantha. We played that game for a couple too many years. I remember we, you were a brave warrior who could turn into a tiger. I remember I was queen of the fairies. I remember we had little journals filled with what we called spells. I remember we played that game wherever we went. Those were some of the best years of my life, being so young and carefree, not worrying about reality. I remember when. I remember when it was New Year's Eve 2019. We went to Miss Priya's party at her restaurant. It was kind of boring, too many adults. We ended up leaving with her kids to go to her house. Their house is so big, it's like a maze. So many rooms and concealed areas. We were sitting in her basement watching the ball drop when we heard a knocking 
Turns out it was your mom trying to find us like a mouse in a maze. As Walter Winchell once said, true friends are ones who walk in when the rest of the world walks out. Thank you. When life gets tough, get tougher. When you're down, look up at the sky and be grateful that there's a to look up at. When you, when you feel like there's no hope, remember, you're still here. Remember, you got clothes in your back and food in your stomach, so face my eyes. When you get popped in the face, and in the cheek. Be grateful that the world is still spinning. Be happy you can worry about what you're going to wear, not what you're going to eat. Be happy that someone will always be there for you. Maybe you don't get along all the time. But when times get tough, they'll be there for you, and you'll be there for them. Because it's family. And family last forever. Not like an all-you-can-eat buffet, where they claim the food is endless. But when you start to eat, they catch you off. <laughs> Who else can you count on for your whole life? To celebrate. When the landlord comes knocking and you have no money, your family will hold the door shut. Who will be there for your whole life? To celebrate. Millions pray to be as lucky as you. They don't want even to turn to. So when you're partying, they're praying. When they're down about a bad day, they're begging to survive. But they don't have a family to turn to. To celebrate. Doors can be a whole lot worse. So when you're the party, go smile and be happy that you don't feel their pain. Because family makes the world go round. Without family, the world gets a whole lot darker. Blood is thicker than water, and family lies forever. To celebrate. As friends come and go, and they're old enough to get you. The only people you can count on are the people that share your name. So when you're betting on the thing that's going to last the longest, you're betting on the thing that's been there for your whole life. So love your family, and they'll love you back. If there's one thing that gets you through life, family. So, so pray and pray you don't lose your family and treat them right. So when it's Christmas, don't be happy that there's presents on the tree. Be happy that your family is there to celebrate with you. Thank you. Yeah, we are in between. Yo, I can help you. But you can't see that tiny font? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Look at what they put on my cup. Do you think that's for me or for you? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. I'm ready. Infants. Infants see love in their mother's faces. The warmth of her hand as she picks you up. The steady rhythm of her breathing as she holds you against her chest. Your mother showers you with love as she protects you from the dangers of the world. Love is the first emotion of every human. Toddlers. Toddlers see love in gifts. A big, shiny corner your sister gave to you. A bag of candy, jam-packed with sugar. A cake, baked just for you on your fourth birthday. Going to the store and being allowed to get anything your heart desires. Love is getting even your smallest wish granted by the people you care about. Children. Children see love as agreement. Your siblings agreeing on what game to play. Your friends agreeing on what show to watch. Your brother agreeing to play with you. Your sister saying that she likes your toys. Love is getting what you want while keeping others happy. Teen. Teens see love as attention. Your friends inviting you to sit with them at lunch. Coaches noticing the work you put in. Parents complimenting you on the grades you've worked so hard for. 
a girl in the hall telling you she likes your outfit. Love is receiving the attention you feel like you deserve. Adults. Adults see love as success. Success in work, success with their kids, just having a successful day. Love is succeeding in what you feel like you need to do. Senior citizens. Senior citizens view love in the little things. Someone saying good morning to them. Someone holding a door open for them. Some, someone telling them how they make them feel. Seeing the one that they love. Love is something small and you need to find it in the little things. Love is in everything. Love can be anything. It all depends on how hard you choose to look. Hey, Leah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Luke is absent. Well, I'm hoping he comes sometime the rest of this week to give me his presentation. Okay, so if I leave right now and I'm absent, then I just have to. You can't leave. It's going to be amazing. You're going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. Hi, Noah. Whenever you're ready. You want to start that timer? Good. Family. Not word alone is a word for home. It creates fuels in a fire that keeps burning brighter and brighter. Everyone has that flame, a place at that flame. A bondage of people that are stronger together, a group of warriors that triumph at higher. Your family and fire are your refuge, your resting place. Whoever your family are, friends, bloodlines, brothers or sisters, are out with you to lift you up. My family to me is an engine, a propeller of hope. I go to my family as everything. They are my bank of information and relations. My life is for them as they are for my life. They are the ones that strengthen me forward. They are my iron on iron and my fist in the fight. They are my inspirational light. They take the pain away. They let my mouth run free. They help me see the future, not the past. No matter what, that's how I cope. It takes one in family, one in fire to light your world. If family is like a physical hope, then faith is like a spiritual rope. It pulls you up, supports your fall, and with it, you can climb any wall. It is a hope that keeps going, like a tsunami to a city. A wave of motion from your faithful ocean. Your faith is your base, your anchor. Build your life upon it. Use it as a gas pedal to repel yourself forward. It is the root of all you do what you do. What's your faith? Without your faith, life would be hard to endure. What your faith is in is a cure for all things against you. So in your faith, give it all like a racing horse. Like my faith in Christianity is a force. I live in and for my faith as it pushes me through everything and drives me forward and helps me onward. In life, your faith is the most powerful thing you can believe. It's something that you stay true to. It is um, something that in my life has helped me forward and pushed me. Um, my faith in me and my faith help me. They're my support and they're my force. They put, um, they help, help, they hold me and I feel safe from them. They are, together they are a uh, breakable shield and a sword without you. In my life, they are my light, and I and I light them up. I will be lost without them, and I'll forever believe in them. My core values are family and faith. Thank you. Sore all over, butterflies fluttering from my stomach into my chest. Grasping the hand of a friend or a family member, I spare the light gushes through our palms. I care for one another, placing in our fingertips. Rain pouring down from thin clouds, as sunlight still creeps through, filling up and warm. Glancing up at the sky, and my heart feels just the same. Hi, I'm Daniel. I get excited at the smallest things a snowy day, a trip to the movies, 
A late night drive or my favorite song on the radio. The smallest things can bring me the utmost amount of happiness. I was born April 30th, 2007. Ever since sculpting the memories, experiences to treasure, all the time my brain and reminding me, and nothing do I find just as much importance as I do in moments such as these. On the tips of my toes, reaching to just the right branch on the Christmas tree, surrounding it with keepsakes of each year, nostalgia stuffed and stored into every day of night. Knots twisting at the bottom of my stomach as the plane lifts me off the ground, carrying me to a place I'm ecstatic to explore. The sound of my own voice fading into a crowd, music pounding in my ears and my feet, my heart racing as the next song begins to play. On the last day of school, the best one of the year, shreds of torn paper tossed up into the air and floating back down as if they were feathers. These cheerful memories that I won't soon forget, those moments I wish that I could relive a million times over. Souvenirs, untouchable and kept in my mind, building for me the foundation of what I must care about. To be surrounded by loved ones, to be doing what I love most, bringing the unparalleled feeling of joy. Joy takes the hand of the things that we love most and the people that we love most in a very true and every happiest memory. Thank you. Thank you. Once I told a story to my favorite people. We sat in a circle, went around, and shared our perfect day. I searched the archives of my mind and I found it. I used to spend my summers on the lake in a little farmhouse where many generations of my family were raised. Our memories are embedded into the very foundation of this house. My whole life can be spelled out in the wildflowers and frog croaks of the farm. I can still hear my complaint about the two-hour drive as we flew down the tree-lined country road, passing miles of cornfields that were play hide and seek. Sky-high silos glistening full of rain took a sharp pain of barefoot steps on the long rocky driveway collecting wild blackberries in the field. Distant memories, the green, the gold, tubing in the hot sun, secrets buried in the sand, no cares in the world, my imagination soaring through the endless clouds. My mom telling us ghost stories about Squishy Foot, the lake monster who snatched unsuspecting kids as the sun set over the rippling water. Waking up to the smell of my grandma's morning glory muffins, eating grilled cheese, at this annual ski show, my brother chasing me down the long winding corridors in the field as on the tractor. Then he crashed into a tree. The seven cats hunting birds and squirrels who are alive with song to bring about their day. Memories interlacing in my mind, the story so unique and close to my heart. Hopping in between rafts, being pulled behind my best friend's vehicle, elated. Our burn pile awoken, provoked into a massive bonfire. Kids run in circles around the towering flames until the embers turn white. Thank you. are like kindness. They can shape who you are. A fingerprint, something so insignificant, you leave them everywhere without even meaning to. They're all different. Not one fingerprint or kind action is the same. You can see them everywhere if you just look. They don't only shape you, but they shape others around you. Your print can start a journey, a journey that'll last a lifetime. Start your journey with others' kindness. I remember in sixth grade, on my first day of school, I was walking through the halls and somebody bumped into me. My stuff went everywhere. An eighth grader bent down and helped me pick it up. She shaped me that day forever. 
When I was having a bad day and I was walking to school, a little girl looked up and just smiled. She shaped me that day forever. When I hurt my ankle in soccer and was on crutches, I was struggling to get up the stairs and somebody offered a helping hand. They shaped me that day forever. Throughout my life, I've learned that a small smile can change everything without you even knowing. I tried to take that and leave my own fingerprint as well. When my mom wakes up in the morning and makes me tea, I smile at her, hoping to leave my fingerprint and shape her. When I was walking to school, a girl, I liked her shoes and I told her that, hoping to leave my fingerprint and shape her. I don't want you to only leave a fingerprint, but a handprint. I want you to have an impact that can't be denied. How can I do that though? How can I get you to reach out, to outreach your limits? Allowing yourself to take others' helping hands is where it starts. Just look closely at your surroundings. Watch once in a while. Watch for fingerprints. Fingerprints, some, nobody ever notices them, but you can. They can change everything. Just like your actions will leave a mark that will last forever. A fingerprint is like kindness. What will you do with yours? Thanks. You're going to be great. Do you want this to put to the next? Please put your mask on. I hate dictionaries, mostly because they're old and dusty, but also because my name isn't written down on a single one of its pages. So I guess I have to write my own definition for myself. Hi, my name is McKenna. My mind is a file cabinet full of messy memories. The bad ones shut to the back where they don't ever get touched. Words made of conversations and ideas often roam the space in my imagination. The words like me to play race cards with my brain, darting to and fro before the words get the best of me and tumble out of my mouth. I often find myself leaping between decisions, not sure what to do because I probably fear regret above all things. I overthink a lot. I like to think that I'm like a painting, visible things roaming the outside, but on the underlayers lies a graveyard of mistakes, attemptively covered up by my imperfections. I am human after all. My mind likes to play memories on repeat, and the good ones I like to keep attached to me, giving me a warm hug every time I need them. The happy memories are my favorites. I keep a list of my top 10 favorite things. It changes on the daily. Currently topping it are sunsets, freckles, and spaghetti and meatballs. My name comes from a popular beach in Hawaii which is probably why I love the ocean so much. The butterflies in my stomach often draw me back to it. The waves washing up happy memories from long summers. I like to laugh at dumb puppets, mostly of myself. I'm clumsy, I'm messy, and I can be all over the place at some points. And honestly, I get stressed when thinking about the future and what life has in store for me. But I know that however life rolls, that I will end up just fine in the end. Thank you. Don't be scared. Can you go um, click the next thing? There are candy canes over there. Why don't you put your phone away? Once upon a time, 
upon a time was the first phrase that fascinated me, because he could follow the ventures of a daring hero, or the purest princess deserving the happiest ending. Most importantly, he could twist the traditions, claiming that there is such thing as a sinful protagonist and a saintly antagonist. Once upon a time, the most cruel villain came up to me and said with a single chilling breath, you're not living in a fairy tale, pointing to a friend of mine, understanding that I couldn't come to my senses, that I thought I was in the happiest friendship, whilst holding back tears every moment with her. However, I was so caught in what I thought was the perfect story. So, Mr. Smith, the most compassionate protagonist, came up to me and said with a single heartwarming breath, you're not living in a fairy tale. And in that moment, my soul shifted. Because of the misjudgments I placed on Mr. Smith, I was so caught up with, I couldn't realize that he was the hero after all. Once upon a time, we lived in a society of status and so, of status and standards, where what mattered most were the people surrounding us and groups isolated themselves amongst others. One day, a girl approaches me and asks for a friend. Being fearful of change, hesitant and half part of all that was in me. Because, but that's not how the tale goes. The purest princess deserves the happiest ending, and she sure was the purest of them all. That I would have never known if my perception was limited to a closed pool, fearful of the unknown. Once upon a time is a phrase that fascinates me, because it does not tell a restricted story of a superhero born with magical powers to save everyone, or a prince charming to give a true love's kiss. Because if perception and if, because if toxic perception and judgment is sustained, you can tell the best story. And that's how I achieved my happily ever after. So, no. Cool. You can just stand up there and ramble. Maybe not ramble. What is happiness? How is it achieved? Is it through wealth? Like a picture of Ben Franklin on a crisp green piece of paper. <laughs> is it a brand new fancy sports car? or even a reward for hard work. Although I think all of these play a part, happiness can only be achieved if you can find it in every moment in life, good or bad. So what is it? Well, it can't be described by a single word because happiness is a fresh breeze of warm air. It's your favorite food or when your favorite team wins. It's when you wake up and look outside the window and you see that fresh blanket of snow on the ground and your parents tell you it's a snow day. It's riding down the slopes and feeling that, that cold, sharp wind against your face, but it doesn't hurt because it's happiness. But most importantly to me, happiness is like basketball. It's feeling that leather against the palms of my hands and it's, it's hitting that game-winning shot or it's that perfect three-pointer where the net just barely moves. But just like happiness, basketball takes time and practice to master. And I'm still learning. It can break your ankles. It can make you tired. But you have to persevere. Because if you are able to find happiness in every moment, then you can fully achieve it in life. So remember, be happy for this moment because these moments make up your life.
I bet you think the rich person with the fancy car is successful. I bet you think the watch on their wrist makes them feel like the greatest person in the room. And I bet they believe they are. But when they go home every night to their big house all alone, their feelings of happiness fade away. I bet you think the person with the brand new iPhone 13 in their pocket is feeling great. But you think they got to be pretty well off to be able to afford that. And I bet they wish they were. Because at the end of the month, they barely scrape up the money to pay off their car. These people think that if they buy these items, people will see them differently. They think people will see them as successful. But that's not what it's about. To me, success is, isn't measured by the materialistic things in life, but by the happiness one can feel. I bet you think the person in the freight clothes might not be very cheerful. I bet you think they're barely making it through, and you might not want to be them. But at the end of their day, they go home to their little loving family and little house while being the happiest person in the city. The reality is the poorest person in the room can still be the most successful. They might not have the newest car or a new phone, but they have their happiness. And in the eyes of people who truly know the definition of successful, they know who is and who isn't. This is one of the most common things people think in our society. They're more worried about the items and belongings they wish they had than they should be more concerned with what they already have. We were taught that mistakes were normal and just a part of life. We were taught that it was how you dealt with the mistakes that led to success. Because it was preschool, we were expected to make mistakes over and over again until we finally got it right. And once we did, we were overjoyed with that feeling of success. This led to countless little successes over the years, whether it was reading a sentence that you previously struggled with or walking across a bounce beam after calling countless times before. It was how you responded to the failures that led to success. In elementary school, I convinced myself that I could control all the failures. And although failure was inevitable, I believed that I just wasn't doing enough to succeed. I became very competitive with everything that I did. And whenever I failed, which I happened to do a lot, I would one, start crying, or two, make up excuses. In elementary school, success became very clear to me. And anything less than success was failure. Once I got to middle school, I began to base my success off of statistics and grades. Anything less than an A was failure, and anything less than an A and the world was ending. Anytime I went 0 for 3 in a game, I convinced myself that I should never pick up a ball again. And in middle school, I, was, I convinced myself that letters and numbers were the only thing that mattered. During the first semester of high school, I've been trying to change my mindset and see every little thing as a success. Just like preschool, I'm growing and finding ways to get better and considering every improvement success. Shoot. Now when I complete my homework on time or manage to save a couple of cents, that's success. I still feel the validation from grades and athletics. But what I realized as I got older was that I can con that I can control what I see as success. I realize it's important. Okay, I can't. I <laughs> realize it's important to view the small successes just as you would the big ones. Thank you. Can you change this? Change this. <laughs> I know. Are there, is anybody watching? Um, four people are on. <laughs> it's been going for an hour and three seconds. And now they have a good close up of your face. 
from this area right here. There you go. Perfect. Every day of our lives, we've woken up with the same human being, one that has all in common with us. The same face, the same voice, the same hair. Someone that has been with you since the day you took your first breath. People always say that the one thing you can truly rely on is yourself, but I don't necessarily think that is true. Of course, I agree that the one person that has been with me since day one and will continue to is myself, but being able to rely on yourself always, that is what I do not believe in. The reason we people are constantly making mistakes is because we are constantly relying on ourselves. Human error is the one thing each person on this planet does, but if I don't think the only person we can rely on is ourselves, then what can we rely on? Well, I don't think it's any person at all. It's where we've been our entire existence. The place where Christmas lights hung precisely on each house, glisten in the steady falling snow. The place where my family and I drive to Minnesota and I jump into the lake that my grandparents live on. The soft but strange grass, mossy feeling that we all know which touches my feet ever so lightly. From the willow tree that lives in my backyard to the tiny bamboo plant that sits in my room, most definitely not getting enough sunlight. <laughs> the existence of our planet is already unimaginable. What has been created on it is even more astounding. The way that grass grows and water flows, how birds chirp and people laugh. Life has been created on Earth, and I think we could never have loved the Earth so well if we had had no childhood in it. If it were not the Earth, where the same flowers come up again every spring that used to gather with our tiny fingers, what novelty is worth that sweet monotony where everything is known and loved because it's known? Earth is the one place we can rely on that it will be here when we wake up in the morning. Even after our souls have moved on to a different life, the ground will still be here. The one thing, what's something we can all rely on is that thunder is always sounding somewhere in the world. Rain is constantly falling, even if not on our specific heads. The one thing we can all rely on is our earth. Maybe we're not all as different as we think we are. Thank you. <laughs> Um, when you come back, like, can wait until who's ever going is done. Okay. That was so terrifying. It's not terrifying. I do it every day. <laughs> One second. Please be quiet. The dictionary definition of family is cold and technical. My family is not technical nor cold. They're my closest friends, not a social unit of one or more adults. My true family was both given to me and chosen by me. They're my sculptors, they shape me. They're my challengers, they push me. They're my advocates, my teammates, my best mates. My true family is not measured by the purity of the blood, but by the purity of the bond. My true family is not perfect, and many of my life lessons come from the imperfection. When the relationships are tested, whether by distance or by aggravation, my family teaches me patience, teaches me to do better, to be better, and teaches me forgiveness. In turn, I teach them the same. This is the perfect part of imperfection. We met. The bond between us is like a muscle. When we break it down, it comes back even stronger. My true family guides me through decisions, supports my choices and my goals. They know me. They accept me without exception, but debate me to open my mind. Their advice compels me to become a better human being, the best I can be. They challenge me when I fail to fully challenge myself. They know when I haven't fulfilled my potential, when I have more to give, more in the tank, more to do needs to be done, and more to share with the people I care about. And when I fail or feel sorrow, I trust them to lift me up, hold me up, and not let me down until it's enough. My true family is consistent despite the inconsistencies of life. Hundreds, thousands of miles away, hundreds, thousands of days away from our last time together, I know they are there. If we change states, teams, schools, friends, we are that a consistent, loyal family. True family stays that way through change. It's changed and changed the way we talk, the way we interact, the way we trust. Strong bond remains, bringing about the habits we tap into while we are with each other. My true family does not fit within the limits of the dictionary definition. They are the people gifted to me and I have, and I have chosen that have influenced my life. 
The line between brother and best friend is blurred when blood isn't the main consideration, but instead a shared trust, faith, respect, and love. <clears throat> These are elements of my true family, who I know will accept me for who I am and who I will become. After all, they are the purest ingredients of my life story. Was awesome. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Take a deep breath. You're gonna do something. Okay. It's gonna be amazing. Okay. Go. There you go. Yeah, perfect. All around us, we hear whistles blow and coaches yell. The feeling and atmosphere of a late Saturday night game is unmatchable. My teammates and I do our huddle like we do every time. I step onto the grass with the overhead lights illuminating my playing field. I take one step and I swipe the grass with my right hand. I do it every game. It's my good luck. I, I feel a buzz throughout my body that's telling me I know I'm prepared for the moment I've worked for every practice. And as soon as the referee blows his whistle, I can't help but smile. I'm where I feel the most calm, and most energized at the same time. It's my escape from the real world. There's no pressure to get good grades in a soccer game. It's just playing. There just isn't anything that gives me a reason to stress out when I step onto the field. When I step onto the field, I play with some of my best friends who make me laugh when I need it and who share the love of the game. I play in front of some of the most important people in my life. My dad, like father, like daughter. He's passed on his soccer wisdom and wisdom about life. My mom, who's always helped me overcome adversity throughout my journey. And my coach, who I've known since I was nine years old, who's helped me get to where I am today. Everyone who I need is there. Oh, I don't think some people understand how much I love playing. I actually look forward to my games, knowing that that's where I'll be happiest, feeling, feeling nothing but bliss because I get to do what I love most, with and in front of the people who are most important to me. When the whistle blows, I grace the field, prepared to express my true passion in life, because the soccer field is where I belong. I've loved and enjoyed every single minute and how happy it's made me. <laughs> that's one way to end, I guess. Yeah, that's it. I'm done. You guys are freaking out. I think they're pretty good, don't it's, you? It's, it's just, it's just Cause you can see yourself. I know. I don't. I didn't like it either, but I couldn't get another computer. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh gosh. Right? Oh, right, Logan? It's amazing. I think you guys are judging yourselves way harder than I am. Like, way harder. There are two things in my life I'm going to go home with. I respect them and always will. Number one, family. A group of one or more parents and their children living together as a unit. Number two, determination. A firmness, a purpose, a resolution. Or a, resolution. a family is a unit, a well-oiled machine. Whether it's made up of mud or blood, your family is your team. Sometimes they are good, other times not so much. But mine is a happy touch. Family can cause feelings of happiness, love, and security. It can also cause feelings of pain, anger, and suffering. They're your anchor, your support, and will always be dedicated to you. You may not always like your family, but you will always love them. Never take them for granted. The bond created from birth through time and dedication is like no other. Completely unique to every person, not one family is like another. I will forever cherish my family. I adore, admire, and appreciate them. Life is hard, and nobody can be perfect. We all have a taking time off mistakes that is counting down every minute you are alive. 
thicken your skin, and don't let cutting mistakes beat you over the ground. If they do, learn from your failure and get back up. Become better from the experience. The ability to endure, to stay strong, and succeed all depends on you. Give it your all, all the time. Take the next stride in your journey, and even though it may seem insignificant, every step counts. To be truly determined, you must have a set objective in mind and be passionate about that goal. Engrave it into your memory, and your being. Be persistent, and even though you may fail, uh, get back up and try again, and again, and again. Keep pondering on the obstacles that block you back. Even if you're afraid of failure, take a leap of faith because after all, you only get one life. Live your life in the moment and don't let anyone else decide your life. Live your life like it is the last day on earth. Live your life free, take risks, and have no regrets. Push yourself to the best of your ability and never care what people think. Keep your goal in mind and remember what will come of your effort. All right, thank you. Thank you, Carter. You okay? I'm amazing. Okay. Better than ever. It's over. That's good, right? Oh, yeah. I want it to go. I'm ready. Fine. Can I can not be in the video? No, you have to be in the video. I have to. Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> this, it's just the next slide. Okay. Family, the most important thing in my life. My mom, my dad, and my sister. My mom and I every holiday season bring up all the ornaments and wreaths and make yummy Christmas treats to create sweetness between our teeth. We rock around the Christmas tree listening to every holiday tune imaginable. We go around the neighborhood looking at all the festive lights on every house, tree, and rooftop, and circle around on ice skates in the hopes that we will fall. We rush around the house getting ready for my grandparents to come and bake up great food that makes everyone say yum. Our bond is like an ornament on Crete and you for years, and our excitement all year is just the beginning of our holiday cheer. Family is the strength felt from love, even when some are watching from above. My dad would come in every morning and say, wake up and come down to eat breakfast. I'd run downstairs all giddy and excited to eat food prepared by the best. We talk about the stats, and no matter what season, there's always a sport that was worthy of opinion. I'd look at the clock, and bam, it was time for school. I'd jump in the car with my backpack all full, and just like that, I was ready to go. I'd get a lecture on why being on time is important, but after that, we'd just talk about our next best trip. We loved going out, whether it was a, for fries or a fancy meal. Our bond will always be with me that I can always feel. My sister and I loved playing bakery in school. I was the only kid in the class, but I still thought it was really cool. We bake up yep, great creations and make a menu for almost every food in the nation. <laughs> Our parents would come in as new people every time, and we wouldn't charge anything, not even a dime. My sister and I are still really close. And I know she'll always be there when I need someone to give me a chair. Again, the most important thing in my life, family. Can you smell like smoke? It's hot. Well, nobody's hot. Like, nobody's on fire. <laughs> it smells like smoke. How do I get out of Escape? Oh, yeah. Sorry, that takes a while. You guys, we have just a few more, so please just hang in there until we're done. What is happiness? It is defined only as the state of being happy. It's good for everyone in every stage of life. We often have more control over our personal happiness than we may think. Happiness changes depending on how you react to things happening to you and how you positively and negatively affect things happening around you. Whether it is your personal life, school, or community, where you react to it directly affects your state of happiness. As a baby, everything needs to be happy. A funny face, not with an explosion of laughter, and a specific face with a bright smile. 
Once the human teenager, as a kid, you start to understand more about others' happiness as well. I start sharing smarter insights, and Gabe gets the birthday. Once you become a teenager, health, mental health becomes more of a problem. I started learning more about what other people thought, which affected my personal happiness and confidence. So I started focusing on what I could do to make myself happy. Right now, I find happiness in my friends and family. I find happiness through laughter while talking with my friends. I find happiness through reflection on the bad things that I've entitled to me. And I find happiness through success after I receive an animal test. But I also find happiness through others. I find happiness when a friend finally gets an A in a test that they're working really hard to act on. I find happiness watching someone change side up after they open the perfect gift. And I find happiness watching a dog run and jump through long grass at the park, chasing birds and playing with other dogs. One of my favorite memories is watching my dog do what I like to call feeding for the first time. He ran around in a circle to drink the human energy and joy that she was feeling. <laughs> I often try to achieve happiness by dreaming a goal that I think will better my life. I especially try to get perfect at it. Create happiness by finding something you are passionate about and create it for others by finding your purpose in your life. It's important to remember that happiness is not something that can be achieved or bought. Happiness is something that should last life. Don't try to achieve happiness and create it for yourself. You didn't want her to do that one? No, I left it off. She could have totally done your poem. Yep. Oh. It was an accident. I didn't have to make it like this. Uh, could you hit slideshow for me? Thank you. You're so lucky I didn't do this, Claire. <laughs> there are two halves of a heart. To some, they're the ventricle and the atrium. To others, they're yin and yang. I am still searching for what they are to me, but I have an idea. One half is love for myself. This side I imagine looks like a light purple, a loyalty to myself. A strong and royal color, but in a soft tone. Like me. It is a love that has always been there for me and always will. A love that could falter through the years. Through insecurities and embarrassment, through bad haircuts and even worse test grades. It is strong, but sensitive. It is polite, but powerful. It's me. The second half of the heart. The love for another. This side I used to imagine red. A burning passion. Beautiful, brilliant, bold. Not a whisper, but a scream. But that is wrong. I have found it is more of a gold, like daylight. It is a love I hope will overwhelm me, fill my body and mind with glitter, sparkling, shimmering, shiny love. A love that even makes the butterflies in my stomach dance all night. A love that makes my cheeks burn from smiling too much. Gold, like a brand new dress, spinning in circles till we fall down. Gold, like the sun that comes after a rain that you and I dance through together. But even if this gold love dies and all is forgotten and lost, if everything is memories and dust, I will always and forevermore have you. For, for me, two, parts of my, two halves of my heart aren't just yin and yang. They aren't just two parts of an organ. They are what breathes the life into me, my simple but oddly complex personality. It is soulful and passionate, but it longs for something more. It aches for the new, the exhilarating, the golden in life, but somehow it always finds the pain, the struggle, the red. A heart can be two halves, but as a whole, it is what makes me, well, me, the sophisticated yet quite fearful. But no matter what one thinks that their heart is made of, in the end, we are all searching for our own golden. <laughs> You know what's my final for them? You know what's my final for them? Okay. You know what's my final for them? You know what's my final for them? You know what's my final for your family gets better and worse as you grow. That smile you constantly wear in your face starts to fade over the years, but hey, you're still going. Things have changed. Mom left her job at the hospital and became a speech therapist. She's no longer leaving the house before the sun wakes up and after it goes to sleep. I wish you luck when you were 11. I remember you feeling like she was never around. 
Eventually, you'll build a strong relationship no matter how long she can be sometimes. Dad is still the same. He loves spending time with us, but misses not having a young kid on your arms anymore. So make sure you spend more time with him. Even though you're growing up, he can always make you laugh. I know that this is the main age when you feel most distant from your siblings. Andrew is 17 and Abby is 15 years old. You have never felt any certain attack to me with either of them because of the age difference. Soon Andrew will leave for college at CSU, and honestly, you won't notice a difference at home. Things have changed. He's now one of the most informed people in my life, but he's starting his own life in Ohio getting his master's degree. Even though he's 1,191 miles away, he can always put a smile on my face. Things have changed with Abby. I can't remember the last time I enjoyed having a conversation with her. Over the next few years, you'll start to notice that she isn't the fun sister you once thought. You'll do your homework while listening to your parents and sisters screaming at each other in the next room over. With you'll eventually put the weight of her actions on your shoulders and ask yourself, am I not a good enough sister? Is it my fault she hates her life? She's diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Originally, you'll justify her actions because of her disorder. You have to realize the pain she has caused you is valid and it is not your fault. The definition of family is a group of people related to one another. But Jim Butcher said, when everything goes to hell, the people that stand by you without flinching, they are your family. So no, you won't consider Abby your family anymore. She flinched too many times. Even though you may never have a good relationship with your sister, the love between you and the rest of your family continues to grow. To end this message, I'd like to say that even though you may think life is too hard, just know you always have a family by your side. And always remember that just because someone is your blood does not make them your true family. Oh my god, I this arrow will click it to you. I don't know who I am yet, nor do I think I ever will know. I think if the world wrote a book about me, it wouldn't be a complete bio. I was born on June 18, 2007, a daughter and a sister. Um, I reconcile the sunset walks, the laughter, and the hugs from family and friends. I don't remember doing anything crazy when I was little, nor do I have a tall tale from my childhood. Even for me, my past is so misunderstood. The thought of death still scares me, and the feeling of stress lingers over my head like a cloud blocking the sun. When I'm with my family, though, my feelings of constant anxiety and self-judgment seem to dissipate into oblivion. I trust that my family will love me no matter what, and I trust that my broken puzzle pieces will be put back together when I come home. The trust, it seems, is the only cure I have. I've been told I write too much on papers. Maybe it's because I have a lot that I don't say out loud. And I've never done good on time assessments, so maybe that's why I'm a little jittery right now. I resist change, and I plan. I guess I plan a lot. Uh, but I found that you can't plan everything. While this startles me, it also calms me. Knowing that I don't have control over every action will lighten my heavy load of stress. I do frequently ponder if I will ever be truly happy, and if my constant search for happiness will just leave me in circles. Hi, my name is Evie. I enjoyed long talks with my mom in the car and a snow-covered mountain to ski. I don't know who I am yet, but I do know that I have a family who loves me and a mind worth knowing. I don't know where life will take me, but I do know that my family will influence me and my search for happiness will guide me. And I know that my journey is just beginning. Thank you. You want me to hold it up? Here, I'll put my copy behind it. Oh, <laughs> Deep breath. It's going to be amazing. You definitely want to be in the screen here because your mom's probably watching. I hope not. You want to say hi? Only one person's watching. It's your mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Let's just go. Okay. Keep your mask on. Okay. You got it. You will face challenges. <clears throat> Can I reset? Yeah. Okay. You will face challenges when working towards a goal. You will fail when playing the role of someone you are not. 
There will always be that other side, the other side where you wish to be, the other side you would do anything to get to. This side is covered in green grass. You dream of laying down and resting your tired, aching body on it. This side is where you promised yourself all your problems would be solved. Standing from the fiery ground of everything you've accomplished, it looks like nothing. This idea of success, is it a 4.0 GPA? Is it the number of followers on your page? Is it your looks? Is it the college you get into? Maybe you think success is measured by green pieces of paper and a number in a bank account. But success requires skill, dedication, hard work, and sacrifice. You must trust your process and only your own. Fall in love with those steps. Though it's not easy, you must fall in love with who you are, then fall in love with who you want to be. I hope when you try and give up on your dreams and forget about them, they rush back into your head and super glue themselves into your memory. I hope when you try and be the person you're not, you forget your lies. But most of all, I hope when you make it to the other side, because I knew you could all along, you look back, you look back and watch how far you've come. Look back and watch how you made friends with the flames. You embrace the challenge. You wanted to give in and let them take the passion from you. But instead, you walked through it, using it as fuel to your journey. When the flames stop burning, you have lost because the journey never stops. The goals won't stop. You did it. You made it to the other side. Now keep going. And then there was one. You didn't um, give us. You need to share it with us. Um, Abeka, will you go back to that page and refresh it and see if that'll fix the problem? Oh, it still isn't working. Look at my hand. Oh, everywhere. They're still on. <laughs> Did you share it with everybody? Yeah, I said it and I would Well, I have the link, I think. No, it's a Google slide. It's a Google slide. If you put the other one, I think. Did you put it over here? I believe. I believe in hard work. I believe that anybody can do anything as long as they put their mind to it. I believe that anybody who gives 100% every single day will never fail. I love baseball. It's my favorite sport. Not only do I love watching it or playing it, I love watching it and following it. One of my favorite players is Derek Jeter. He once said, that you can do, there may be people with more talent than you, but there's never an excuse to let anybody work harder than you. And I believe that in sports and in life. Every single professional athlete, they didn't make it where they are by sitting around on the couch. Every single famous athlete or actor or actress, they didn't make it where they are by lying around in bed. Anybody who has achieved anything, they didn't do it by slacking off. I may not recognize this much, but my parents do so much for me. They work so hard to make sure that I do well in school, my athletics, and they help raise our family. But 
There's so much more to my family than just my parents. My sister, who can be so annoying sometimes. Siblings, right? But we try to get along, you know, once in a while. And then there's my dog, Gracie, who is responsible for driving the entire family insane at times. But she also provides the majority of the laughter in our family. Family sticks together through everything, through all the tough times and the good times too. Whenever I'm going through anything, my family is right there for me, to offer their help and to believe in me, even when I don't believe in myself. I believe that hard work is important, but I believe that family is, is even more important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.